What is up, 456 All Stars and everyone in between? I am so happy that you are here today with us at So Kills Kids. Dude, I'm so excited about today's lesson. We are wrapping up our series on worship. Um, what is worship? And that is anything that we do to honor God. Now, if you noticed in the last video, I did something a bit different, or I keep doing that. I'm going to put the Bible story uh, that they tell at the end, because I basically recap that. And if you want to know more, you can know more. But I want you guys to get into the meat of this lesson. And so we're going to dive in today and finish up our lesson on worship. So let's check that out. So... Basically, what happened in the Old Testament? Uh, we've got this whole story going along of the Israelites, and they're in the wilderness, um, and they're obeying God, and then they're disobeying God, and they're following him. But ultimately, Moses was there to help guide them through all of that. Uh, and eventually, God gives Moses this long list of rules, right? And that is the book of Leviticus, okay? If any of you guys have ever tried to read through the Bible, Leviticus is where you get lost, because it's literally just rules. It tells you what to do in almost every single scenario which is kind of cool because the people in Israel were very technical and they wanted to know exactly what to do, but it's also a lot of rules. But we're going to see how those rules ultimately point us to God because what ends up happening is God asks people to give a sacrifice. So a sacrifice isn't something we're exactly familiar with as much in our time. We might say that we're sacrificing um, our time, like, right, if we're sacrificing our time to be good at sports, right, we're giving up our time and giving it to practicing our sports or sacrificing our money to help support somebody who needs it. I'm giving my money away. I'm sacrificing it. But back then, sacrifices were something entirely different. Sacrifices involved um, usually animals or items, and they were given to God uh, for certain things, right? So there was like peace offerings, uh, and there were sin offerings, and there were fellowship offerings, and there were um, praise offerings. There were all of these different offerings that uh, gave different uh, things to God, right? So if I sinned and messed up, I might have to come take my, well, they had an actual bull. This is actually just a steak. But they would take their sacrifice and sacrifice it on the altar. And for sin, they would usually burn that sacrifice as an atonement for their sins. Or maybe for um, uh, a peace offering, they would bring grain, right? They would come bring flour. Um, and it was probably actually wheat and not ground up like that because that's probably a mess. But they would take something like that and do that instead. And they would sacrifice and offer these things so that... Um, uh, basically, they could worship God. It was a way that they worshipped God and gave him praise and attribution because God asked for it. You see, God asked them um, to sacrifice and to give these things as a way for them to acknowledge um, who God was, to praise him, to show that they were loyal to him, right? Giving up your grain back then was giving up some of your life, right? They lived off of bread and their their livestock. And so these sacrifices were um, part of that, saying, I'm going to trust that God will provide for me instead of thinking I can do it all myself. It was also a way for them to atone their sins. Like I said, their sin offering, they would sacrifice a bull on the altar and burn it there to say, like, this bull is taking the punishment I deserve, right? Now, if you're smart and you've been tracking along the story, you kind of get where we're going here, right? Because ultimately, those bulls, right, they kept being sacrificed over and over and over again. Why? Because we're sinners. We're human. And we mess up a lot. I think I would have a pretty high count of bulls if I were to have to sacrifice one every time I messed up. Because I've messed up several times already today. And it's like 9 a.m., guys. It's early. But what we learn is that God has a plan. And he has so much more to offer. You see, the reality is, guys, God deserves our worship. For the Israelites, that was their sacrificing. That was their time in the temple. That was the things that they did to glorify and honor him. For us, his worship is all of the things we've learned, right? It's singing songs. It's giving to those who need. It's helping others. It's listening to his word. It's reading the Bible. It is all of those things. Anything that brings glory to God is worship, and he deserves it, okay? So let's discuss what deserving means. When we say somebody deserves something, it's something they have done something that means something else should happen, right? So let's say um, someone breaks the law, right? There's a law that says you cannot steal, and someone steals somebody else's car. Well, the law, they know the law. And the law says that they deserve to be put in jail, right? 
and they've done, they've broken the law, and so they deserve to be put in jail. Or maybe your mom tells you, hey, if you get an A on your math test, you're going to get some ice cream for that, okay? And you nail it. You get a 100 on that math test. Well, your mom said you're going to get ice cream, so you deserve ice cream because she promised it to you. Well, when we say God deserves our worship, what do we mean by that? Why does he deserve, what has he done to deserve our worship? Well, the reality is he's done so much, everything. We are here because of him. He created us. He formed us. He knew us before we were born. And ultimately, he deserves our worship because he sent his son to die for all of us, right? John 3, 16. That's why he deserves our worship. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life, right? When we believe in God, when we trust Jesus with our lives, he will give us everlasting life. How amazing is that? So why does God deserve our worship? For so many reasons, but ultimately because he sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we could live forever and ever glorifying him. I don't know about you guys, but that is amazing. Thank you so much for watching today. Like I said, you can check out the Bible story next and retie it back into everything you've learned. But I'm excited and I'm glad you guys watched today. I will see you guys later. Bye. God gave Moses many laws to show his people what holy living looks like. God is holy and he wants to be with his people, but the Israelites could not keep God's laws perfectly. God gave his people rules about how to live, how to worship, and what to do when they sinned. One day, God met with Moses at the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a place where God met with his people and where they worshiped him. God told Moses, speak to the Israelites and tell them what to do when they bring an offering to me. Then. God gave Moses rules about offerings. Offerings are gifts people give to God, such as money, grain, or animals. Different types of offerings were needed at different times. God also gave rules about the priests. Now, priests made the sacrifices that God commanded. The priests took care of the tabernacle and they taught people God's rules for holy living. Aaron and his sons served as the priests. God gave them rules about how to offer sacrifices. And when people wanted to praise God, they gave burnt offerings. God deserves our praise. The Israelites praised God for bringing them out of Egypt. When people wanted to thank God, they gave grain offerings. God deserves our thanks. The Israelites thanked God for providing everything that they ever needed. When people wanted to celebrate God, they gave fellowship offerings. God deserves to be celebrated. The Israelites celebrated God for dwelling with them, and they honored him as their king. When people wanted to say that they were sorry for a sin, they gave a sin offering. God is honored when people turn away from their sin and turn back to him. The Israelites needed to make their relationship with God right again. So the priest gave an offering so the people could be forgiven. God deserves our worship. He created us to be in relationship with him, and he's provided salvation from sin through his son, Jesus. We can worship God by loving and obeying him as we live to give him glory.